Good morning, everybody. We're live from the Bird House. It is Tuesday, August 16th. And today I'm talking about some different behaviors you might see from birds in your backyard as we get into the fall and into cooler months. Um, right now, lots of people are reporting some different behaviors, which is pretty fun and exciting. So it's, it's neat to see how birds and other animals react differently as we move on into different seasons. As always, if you're on, you can say hi. We always love to know who's on. If you have any questions, you can throw those in the comments. And we always like to know what kind of things you're seeing. So what kind of birds, what kind of butterflies, what kind of neat wildlife experiences you might have had had, so you can throw those in the comments as well. So first I'll talk about Orioles because people are still seeing Orioles. It's been kind of hit or miss with people. Um, some people are seeing a whole bunch. Some people are just seeing a few, um, but people are reporting Orioles still and more so in groups than individually. So it seems like they might be kind of grouping up and getting ready to migrate. Um, and as we get closer into uh, September, you might start to see more and more activity at your feeders as they start bulking up to go back down south. So they'll make that migration all the way down to, uh, to Mexico, to Central America, and even into the tip of uh, the, the top part of South America. So they've got a long migration to go. And in order to do that, they will start eating more and building up some of the reserves that they need to make that big flight. So one thing I should mention too, a uh, question we get here a lot at the store is when should I take my feeders down? I don't wanna keep the birds from migrating. If I keep my feeders up too long, are they going to just stick around and not migrate at all? That's not the case. You don't have to worry about that at all. The birds will migrate even if you keep your food source out for them. Um, as the days get shorter and the changes in the lights happen, they just get this uh, restlessness that they need to leave. And so they will, they will migrate even if you have your feeders up. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the rule of thumb goes is you want to keep your feeders up for about a week or so since you've seen your last bird. So if it's been, you know, a couple weeks since you've seen an Oriole as we go into the month, you might want to take your feeders down. Same with hummingbirds. They will both be here through September or so, especially the hummingbirds tend to stick around a little bit longer. Um, so they're here really through the month of September with Orioles kind of fizzling out before that. Uh, but Definitely want to keep your feeders out. If you took your feeders down, you might think about putting them back up because you might start to get Orioles coming back again um, in bigger groups this time. And definitely with hummingbirds, people have been reporting those in larger numbers as well. So um, as far as the Orioles go, though, if you want to feed them, we, we do have birdberry jelly still. They love this mix of grape and blackberry jelly. That seems to be their ultimate favorite. They I love that. And then there's mealworms. So a lot of birds will eat this insect protein in the spring and in the summer. And uh, putting mealworms out can attract the Orioles and other birds as well. You might get wrens, you might get some woodpeckers, um, chickadees. There's a big diversity of birds that will eat those mealworms. You can get them freeze dried or you can get them live and you don't need anything too um, elaborate to put them in. This is a really popular feeder. We just got back in stock. Um, it's a nice little tray with full of drainage holes. It's made of mesh so you don't have to worry about water getting in there and just soaking your seed or soaking the mealworms. And it has a built-in weather guard. So people really like this. It's only $21.95. So this one is very, very popular and you can put the mealworms in it. You can use it for seed once we get into the winter months. So it's, um, you can use it for all kinds of different things. So that, that is a great feeder for the Orioles as well as other birds too. And I like the weather guard aspect on that. So, um, and then as far as hummingbirds go over the last like two weeks or so, we've been having more reports than ever this whole season of people starting to finally get hummingbirds. It's been really slow going and uh, people for months have not been seeing hummingbirds coming to their feeders, but they are definitely starting to come back, which makes sense because they also have a long migration to go. They'll go down to the tip of Florida, to Mexico, to Central America. So they have a really long migration to make as well. And so they need to build up their reserves and they are definitely coming to feeders 
in bigger numbers than we've seen all season long. So that's pretty exciting too. So if you took your feeders down, kind of getting discouraged that you're not getting the hummingbirds, you might want to put it back because people are reporting them um, coming in some, some big numbers. Depending on what feeder you have, you might have some issues with bees and wasps and ants. There are ways to kind of keep them at bay. One thing you can do, depending on the feeder you have, if you've got a feeder that is like this, um, that's kind of, you know, made of glass, or it's like the, the glass kind of tall tube type of feeder, when you fill it, because you're filling it like this and you're screwing the, you're, you're filling your feeder and then you're putting the base in after the fact, one thing you can do is once it's filled, you want to gently tip it upside down and not shake it a lot. If you shake it, the nectar kind of comes up to the top of the feeder. Some of these are designed to keep the nectar level low. Like this one is called the Dr. JB's feeder. This is one of our best sellers here. Um, and it's designed to kind of keep the, the nectar level very low inside the feeder. The reason for that is that the hummingbirds can dip inside this feeder with their beak. They've got really long beaks. They have really long tongues, so they can easy to easily dip in there, get the nectar that they want. But bees and wasps, they don't have that really long proboscis or anything like that, like a butterfly has. They just have short little stumpy tongues. So unless the nectar level is really high up in the feeder, it's hard for them to get into it. So you just don't want to shake your feeder up too much when you're filling it. And that can help keep the bees and um, the wasps out of it. Some other things you can do if you've got uh, a feeder by the Aspects company or even Drill Yankee sometimes, like a little dish feeder like this. If you open it up, check the inside of it and see if there's, I don't know if you guys can see them, um, from this angle, but there's almost little protrusions here um, coming up from the inside of the feeder. You can kind of see them there. And on these, you can put what are called nectar guard tips. They are just these little rubber tips that go on the inside of the feeder. And so what they do is they make a barrier. So in order to feed from the feeder, the hummingbird has to poke through these little rubber tips, which they can easily do. Again, they've got that long beak, um, but the bees and wasps can't. So it's just another barrier to keep them out of the feeder. So depending on what feeder you have, you might be able to put these on it, again, to keep the bees and the wasps out. As far as uh, feeders that don't have those, or if you're not sure, you can always put up one of our decoy bald-faced hornet's nests, which have been quite popular, actually. They look like a paper lantern, and they mimic a bald-faced hornet's nest. And bald-faced hornets are super territorial. They can be very, very mean. And so putting something like this up will signal to other bees and wasps that there are bald-faced hornets in the area, and they don't want to be around them. And I don't blame them. And um, so this will really help keep them away from your feeders. We've had great, great feedback about this. And they also help keep them away from other areas as well. If you've got wasps that are around your pool, or if they are around a pig, picnic area or anything like that in your backyard, um, these can really help to keep them away. I'm, I've been pleasantly surprised about the feedback we've gotten from those that they really, really work well. So that's something else you can do. You can easily put them up. They're only a few bucks and it'll help keep those, uh, those wasps at bay. And then ants are another issue, of course, as we go in this, into the season, both the um, the, the hives of the bees and wasps get bigger and then those colonies of ants can also get bigger and they will definitely look for your nectar feeders. So there are ways to keep them out. One of the easiest ways is with a nectar protector or an ant moat. Um, these are really fun. This is what I put on my feeders because um, first of all, it's super simple. You just fill it with water and then you hang your feeder from it. And the idea with these are that the ants will crawl down to try to get to your feeder and they can't get across the big moat there of water. So they're unable to get across this and go down to your feeder. These are super easy. You just have to keep them filled. 
Um, in the summertime, it can be a little bit more difficult if it's hot and the, the water evaporates, um, but they work really, really well at keeping the ants out. Plus, it acts as a little bird bath as well. I get goldfinches that are constantly drinking out of my little ant moats. So I love that in it. So it's kind of like a twofer. And then another thing you can do to keep ants out of your feeders is put out this natural ant repellent. This is just a little gel and it smells like kind of like cinnamon or like clove. And there's something about that smell that the ants don't like. So you can kind of see it in the pictures here. With the gel, you just make a little line, like a little, you just um, kind of line it around the pole that you might have or the feeder itself. You can put it around the top of the feeder and it just creates this impenetrable little uh, little line that the ants won't cross. We have so many people that swear by this product. So this is a really easy way to keep ants out of your feeder as well. And it lasts a long time too, which is great. We've got the two pack and that should, it'll definitely last you for the, the rest of this season and probably into next year as well. So there's been lots of reports of hummingbirds. So definitely put those hummingbird feeders back out if you took them down for a little bit. Um, I know I did. I put my humbug feeder out to try to get those, um, to get fruit flies instead of putting out the nectar. It was just less less time consuming, less work. Um, but my nectar feeders are back out and the hummingbirds are coming. So that's really, really exciting. And then as, we've, as we are getting into the fall, uh, we are still having warm weather and it's been quite, quite hot. And so having some kind of a water source is definitely necessary for the birds. Um, definitely during the summer and even as we go into the fall and into the winter, the birds always need a source of water. And as it gets colder and colder and colder, it can be hard for them to find that source of water, which we'll talk about as we get into the colder months. But right now, one of the best things you can do is to provide some kind of a moving water feature, not only for the birds, but to keep the mosquitoes from being able to develop in your bird bath. And we have a couple different ways you can do that. I love these, the solar inserts. You just put them in your bird bath. They're all self-contained, so they're super easy to, um, to operate and to use. There's a solar panel on the top of this little fountain. And the um, so when the sun is hitting that solar panel, it'll create, it'll make the pump flow and it'll create a little water feature. So moving water definitely brings more birds in. The sight and the sound of the moving water will attract more birds. And definitely as we're getting into fall migration, you might start getting some different birds that you haven't seen all summer long, um, which is neat. People get scarlet tanagers coming to their bird baths. Sometimes we hear about warblers coming to bird baths, especially if there's some of that moving water. Hummingbirds are another type of bird that love moving water. So having some kind of a spraying water feature helps to attract them. We also have these misters that you can, you can attach to your hose. And um, these are super simple to operate. You attach it to your hose and you can um, clip this onto a bird bath. You can clip it onto a shrub, anything you want like that. And it just creates this little mist and hummingbirds are known to fly through the mist in order to clean their feathers. So that's another way you can attract hummingbirds is with this little mister, super, super simple. You just attach it to your hose. You can adjust how much water comes through it so you don't have to use that much water to operate it. And that's another way to attract some new and different birds to your yard. And you can always put in a water wiggler into your bird bath as well. So the mister attaches to the hose. That solar fountain insert is just operated by the sun. The water wiggler is battery operated. We do have a solar version, but the, the battery operated one is the most popular. Um, you just put a couple, I think it's either C or D, it's two D batteries in it, and this will last all season long. We, we have customers that just put batteries in it once a year to change it out. It's a little propeller, basically. It's a um, let's see if I put it like this. It's um, basically, it looks like a little UFO and then there is a propeller at the bottom and it just spins and spins and spins and that creates ripples of water. So not only does the sight of that attract birds, but it also makes it so mosquitoes can't 
develop in your bird bath. So they can't, uh, those eggs can't develop, the larvae can't survive in the bird bath with those. And if you're looking to make your bird bath less um, gunky, I guess is, is the proper term in the summer months or whenever, really, we do have bird bath protectors still. You just add a little capful of this every time you're changing your water out and it just helps break down some of the stuff that gets in there and makes the water cloudy um, or if there's kind of like a slime layer which is which is always um, exciting um, it just helps break that down so this is all natural enzymes it's made specifically for bird baths so we do have some of that in in as well and we also have these for fountains too if you've got a fountain you might see that same kind of thing happen where the pump gets kind of clogged up often if you add just a little bit of this into it, it will help keep that from happening. And then we do have brushes as well. So it's always important to keep bird baths clean. And if you're looking for a way to scrub them down, we have bird bath brushes, uh, magic erasers work really well for that kind of thing. So there's different ways to clean those as well. So birds are definitely looking for water. It's been really, really warm here. and We haven't gotten that much rain at all. So having a uh, water feature out has been definitely helpful for the birds and will continue to, to be so. And then now that we're in uh, kind of the later summer, you might start to see some different behaviors of birds at your feeders, specifically the birds grabbing some seed and then caching it away. So a lot of birds will have this kind of behavior where they take seeds and then they stow them away for the winter months when food is more scarce. So in general, in the fall, the food is is pretty plentiful. There's a lot of in, uh, insects out there still, and there's lots of seeds. As these flowers are going to seeds, the birds can can take those seeds and store them away while they're still eating insects. So you might see birds grabbing some some seeds from your feeder and then going to a hollow hole in a tree or going to a crevice in a tree and just pecking them into the tree or putting them into some hollow cavities in order to save them for later. So that's a really neat behavior that we see now from blue jays are known to do that. So if you are feeding peanuts in the shell for the blue jays, keep an eye out for them. They um, have a special pouch in their mouth too that they can uh, put a few peanuts in their in their in their cheeks at, at once, which is pretty cool. Um, so they'll do that. If you have oak trees, once they have acorns, the blue jays love acorns. They're known to stash lots of acorns around, and um, they're they're well known for doing that and for um, helping oak trees grow because they will stash them around in so many places. So blue jays are a definite, um, a, a bird that definitely does that. Um, nut hatches are another, which makes sense if you think about their name, hatching nuts away. So nut hatches are known to do the same thing. They'll grab seed from the feeder, they'll put it in the little bark crevices, um, or they'll put it in little cavities and trees. Chickadees and um, titmice are also birds that are well known to do this kind of activity. So some seeds you might want to put out in order to kind of give them some of these, uh, some of these seeds that they can easily stash away. We've got some different types. Of course, there's always black oil, sunflower, just about any bird that will come to a bird feeder as far as a, a a seed feeder will eat the black oil sunflower. And then there's the sunflower hearts, which are the insides of the sunflower. And these I see the nut hatches go for all the time. They seem to really like these sunflower hearts. And so if you give them the sunflower hearts, it'll uh, be just that kind of little extra that they will take and they will stash it away. It's also important to know too that it's uh, the, the, the seed, it, by putting out bird feeders and then taking them down, it's not going to kill the birds in any way. They're not so dependent on the bird feeders that they won't be able to survive over the winter. But having that extra food that they're able to eat and able to cash away does give them a leg up as far as their survival in the winter months, especially when food is scarce. So having some extra food out now that they can easily stash away is uh, a good way to give them a leg up for the winter months ahead. So it doesn't, uh, put, taking your feeders down won't kill them uh, by any means. And they won't starve, nothing like that. Um, they just use the feeders as a supplement of their natural diet, but it does help give them a leg up, especially during those months when, when food is scarce. So I should mention that as well. Another food that you can put out 
are peanuts. So you can do peanuts in the shell. You can do these peanut pickouts. And this is especially what the Blue Jays will go for. Woodpeckers, the tit mice, the chickadees, they love these peanut pieces. And both the peanuts and the sunflower or sunflower hearts, they have a lot of fat in them. They have a lot of protein. So it's an excellent source of food and calories for them as uh, they go into the winter months. So just some extra food that you can put out for them now where they can stash it away is always a help. If your yard is anything like mine, and I've talked to a lot of you guys as we've come into the store buying this product, the Finch Favorite. The Finch Favorite is going like crazy in my feeders at home. The birds absolutely love this. If you're trying to attract gold finches, the Finch Favorite is absolutely the way to go. Plus you can get other birds with it too. So this is a mix of Niger seed and ground up sunflower hearts. And the, so the goldfinch is really like the Niger, but they also eat those sunflower hearts, especially if they're ground up. Chickadees like it, the nuthatches like it. I've been getting a downy woodpecker coming to it. So the finch favorite is great, not only for the finches, but other birds really like it too. And then it's got those sunflower hearts in it, which the birds will eat. And then they can also store some of those away too. And if you don't know what kind of feeder to put it in, that can go into any kind of just regular Niger feeder. That's going to be the feeders that have the little tiny holes in them. So this, any kind of Niger feeder is great for the finch mix. Um, as far as peanuts go, if you're looking for a way to feed birds, peanuts. We've got a whole bunch of feeders. Some we've had for a while. Some are brand new. So I thought I'd show you some. If you're feeding peanuts in the shell, which are the favorite of blue jays, this um, peanut wreath has always been super popular. Um, the peanuts in the shell go in here and the birds will either pull them right out of the feeder or they'll kind of peck away at the shell and pull out the little peanut pieces from inside the shell. Um, so this wreath is, is fun. I think people like just the look of it. If you're looking for a way to feed peanuts in the shell, that's a little bit easier than that. Um, that one, the, the wreath feeder is cute. It's not the easiest to fill. These are super easy to fill. The top just lifts off and the birds can pull the peanuts right out of this mesh here. Um, and it also has big perches on it, which is nice, especially for the blue jays. If you're looking for a feeder, for blue jays to feed peanuts in the shell, get something with a large with larger perches on it. They can get on things that are smaller, but it can be hard. They kind of flop around on it a bit. And um, I find red belly woodpeckers really like this as well. They seem to really like the peanuts in the shell. So you can get some woodpeckers and blue jays um, on something like this. And if you are feeding the inside of the peanuts or the peanut pickout parts that look like this. Um, these are the, the parts that the chickadees really love, the, the tit mice, the nut hatches. We do have some different feeders that, um, that are new this year. Some of them we just, just got in. Um, this one's pretty cool. It is a mesh style peanut feeder. It's got a base on it that easily pops out, which is really nice. But it also has a funnel in here that'll stagger the seeds. So as the birds eat the peanuts from this, it doesn't all just, um, as they're eating, it doesn't all just settle on the bottom. Some will settle up here, some will settle down here because that funnel will stagger the seed on different levels. So that's really nice too. You can get more birds on it at a time um, because of that feature. We also have Niger feeders that do the same thing, which are really popular, which we've had for a long, long time. So that's one type of peanut feeder. And then we just got, these in as well. These are new. Um, if you're, if you want to put out the peanuts, but you don't want something super big or super expensive, you just kind of want to test it out and see how the birds like it. This is a little, little peanut feeder here. You can use it for the peanut pickouts. You can also use it for sunflower seed, and the birds will just land on this. A lot of the birds that eat peanuts will just can cling. They don't necessarily need a perch, and they'll just peck away at the little peanut pieces and pull them out. And we just got this one. This is a brand new one. Um, similar idea. Doesn't have the little weather guard on it or the little tray, but again, they don't really need that because they'll cling on to the side of the feeder and the birds will cling on here and pick out the little peanut pieces. This one's 
a nice size. It's it's bigger, but it's less expensive than some of the other ones that we carry that are stainless. Um, this one's only $31.95 and it's a nice metal quality peanut feeder. So some brand new stuff that we just got in for the birds. And of course there's suet as the, as the, the months go on and it gets colder and colder. Suet is always popular, although the birds are eating the suet like crazy in my yard right now. Um, the most popular feeders continue to be these paddle tail feeders and for good reason. The woodpeckers really like this paddle tail feature. When they cling onto the feeder, they can use this to prop their tail up so they're not flopping all around on the bird feeder when they go to eat from it. And as far as suet goes, we have all kinds of different flavors. We've got things with berries, with nuts. We do have orange suet still. If you're getting Orioles or you want to see if you still have Orioles, you can put orange suet in your suet feeder. The hot pepper stuff is super popular because the squirrels won't eat it. So we do have plenty of that in stock. The squirrels can taste the hot pepper. They have more taste buds than the birds do. The birds just don't taste that. So you can get plenty of birds at your suet feeder. You don't have to worry about the squirrels bothering it. So suet is really popular. And finally, the seed logs. So we've got different flavors of these seed logs as well, including a hot pepper version called Flaming Hot Feast. And these are nice because they take longer for the birds to go through. So if you're filling your feeder every day or every other day and it's getting to be a bit much or time consuming, or you're just going through a lot of seed, these seed these seed logs will last much longer. The birds kind of have to work at it. They have to peck away at it a little bit more. And um, these are super, super popular. The feeders that they go on are really simple. Just something like, like this that has perches. The, the seed log will slip right on here and the birds just go to town on these. So these are really great way to feed birds if you're on a budget or if you're looking to add a, a new type of feeder. Love the seed logs. This Flaming Hot Feast is one of our best sellers, if not the best seller. The Bugs, Nuts, and Fruit, which we've talked about before, attracts a whole bunch of different birds, including bluebirds. People are very lucky uh, with getting bluebirds on that Bugs, Nuts, and Fruit log. And then I also like the safflower. I always have one of these in my backyard because this is the last thing that the sparrows will go to. They'll eat it in a pinch, but they don't seem to like it. So they'll go to all my other feeders first. The safflower is always kind of the last thing for them to eat, but the cardinals love this. So the cardinals have been eating this. The house finches really love this. So it's a way for me to still get some of those more colorful birds and, um, you know, kind of keep the sparrows elsewhere. So love the safflower log. If you have any questions, you can absolutely put those in the comments. So you can put any kind of questions or sightings you guys have been having. Love to know what kind of behaviors you are seeing in, in your backyard. If you've seen any of this kind of behavior where the birds are gr grabbing stuff and kind of stashing it away. It's pretty, pretty cool. Um, and it's neat that they can actually retrieve these things as well. There, some birds are known to store thousands of food items in a given year. And it's Amazing. Um, there's been studies on chickadees that show that their hippocampus, the part of the brain that is known for spatial memory, actually grows in chickadees during the fall so they can help remember where some of these things are that they hide. So it's pretty amazing stuff that's going on in the world of nature here. So let's see who's on. It looks like Bob is on, who's always sending in his awesome photos of his yard. He says, good morning. I've been seeing fairly large flocks of robins, grackles, and cowbirds flying overhead, typically in the morning. Also have lots and lots of chipping sparrows now. On a funny note, I have to fill my ant moat a few times a day because the goldfinches, chickadees, nuthatches, chipmunks, and even squirrels drink all the water. Also funny because the hummingbirds are not fans of that activity and often chase the birds around to keep them away. <laughs> so yeah, so it sounds like um, Bob's ant moat also doubles as a, uh, a, a bird bath, which isn't surprising considering how dry it's been out recently. And it's funny to hear that about the hummingbirds because they are super territorial. Um, you might see that at your feeders if you have multiple hummingbirds coming to one feeder that they start chasing each other around. They are very, very territorial and are definitely known to do that. And the flocks of uh, robins could be 
migrating through. Some robins will stay here all year round. Some will get from up north in Canada, will we'll migrate down here. Um, the grackles and cowbirds, though, should be starting to head down south, actually. Um, they'll, they'll be here for a little bit longer, but um, they will go south for the winter. So if you've been having grackles raiding your feeders all summer long, uh, you can take some solace in knowing that they are going to be heading out soon. So uh, Dina is on. She says, good morning, everyone. The Orioles are back. I think they are fattening up for their migration. More hummingbirds as well. A family of pileated woodpeckers come quite regularly. And yesterday I had another redheaded woodpecker at my suet. Ooh, so that's really, really good. So Dina is seeing some of that activity where the Orioles are coming back. She's getting lots of hummingbirds at her feeders. So that is totally in tune with what we've been hearing from, from others as well. So that's great to hear. And yeah, they're definitely starting to fatten up for their migration. So very, very cool. And redheaded woodpecker is awesome. Having redheaded woodpecker at your feeders is really not common. So that's a great sighting that you're having redheaded woodpeckers at your feeders as well. Um, Lynn is also on. She says, good morning. Can't keep enough suet and safflower out. Yep. <laughs> Refilling every day. Orioles and hummingbirds are back hanging around. So Lynn also seeing that same activity. The Orioles and the hummingbirds hanging around, which is really awesome so that that is great and you're not alone in having an, an issue keeping your feeders full so many people are saying that there's lots of baby birds out there they're definitely hungry and um, they're eating lots of seeds lots of suet so sometimes people think suet of more of a winter thing that the birds will really only go for it in the winter it's totally not the case they love it even in the the, the summer months and if you're worried about having suet out there that it'll melt. We do have some types um, called never melt suet that won't melt even if it's really, really warm out. Kathy is on and says, good morning. We've seen our first hummingbird just this week and heard a Baltimore Oriole just yesterday. So fun. So um, yeah, so many people were saying that they had, didn't have any hummingbirds all season. They hadn't seen any. And now all of a sudden they're coming. So I'm glad you, I'm glad you're finally getting them. I know it's been a, it's been kind of a long time coming. Uh, Vicki is on. She says on a dead branch on a live tree that is loaded with lichen, I was watching a chickadee picking at it, eating or using for a nest. Ooh, um, that's a good question. I'm not sure if they eat the lichen. They might, uh, but some birds do use that to line their nests. Um, but chickadees are cavity nesters and they use a lot of moss in their nest building. So I'm not sure if they use lichen. So it could be that it was eating something in there. That's a really neat behavior. I'm not sure if they eat lichen or not. I'll have to look that up. Huh, but you never, yeah, it's a, some really cool behavior there. Um, Thanya says, um, good, good to know. I have at least three hummingbirds, but their feeders are separated from the big birds feeders. So the only thing they share is the tree branches. Yeah, so if you are trying to attract a bunch of different hummingbirds, we only have the one species here on the East Coast. Um, but the best thing to do is to put up multiple feeders kind of spaced out. And because they're so territorial, you don't necessarily need big feeders. You could put out a few small feeders all scattered around. Um, if you've ever seen photos of these hummingbird feeders that are just filled with hummingbirds, you know, they're all feeding at once. That's usually from out in the West, like in the Southwest where they have a whole bunch of different species. And if um, you happen to be on their migratory routes, they can just congregate in the hundreds or thousands sometimes. And that's where those pictures are coming from. So here on the East Coast, if you have a couple on your feeder at once, that's pretty good. And they are super territorial. So the odds of having more than that on your feeder at once aren't very, very good. Um, but having different uh, different feeders out in different spots where they can't quite see one another, that's the key to getting more and more hummingbirds. And um, Danny says, good morning. Let's see. Kathy says, we have a family of baby cardinals in our arborvitae. All right. So yeah, cardinals can have a couple broods a year. So if you saw some earlier, some young ones earlier in the season, you might start to see some, some other young ones. Same with robins. You might see a couple sets of them 
uh, 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 of their young because they can have a couple broods a year as well. So it's good to know you've been having baby cardinals. They will love safflower seed. Um, so that's always a good thing you can put out. Or, and then black oil sunflower, of course, they absolutely love that. So that's great that you're having cardinals. Um, Tanya says, right, I have two small ones on each side of the yard. So sh she's keeping her hummingbird feeders separate from one another so they can um, they can all get along and not not fight so much which they do um, we do have things called hummingbird swings which are kind of fun you can put up there uh, just there they look like just a little swing and you can hang those kind of above your feeder and the hummingbirds will perch on there and overlook their territory and the, if they see something else fly in it doesn't even have to be a hummingbird like uh, another hummingbird just like how bob was reporting the hummingbirds didn't like that other birds are coming to drink from the ant moat that's close to their feeder um, if the hummingbirds see any other kind of bird fly into their territory they'll st they'll chase them away so that, that can be pretty fun if you're looking to see some more and different bird behaviors you can put up something like that it's called a hummingbird swing so it looks like that's everybody's comments and questions we'll have another broadcast on saturday so we'll be back then and until then enjoy your birds and have a great week